Hello, everyone. I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, and this is Creating an Inspired Life. Thank you so much for watching and listening. I'm a medium, and as a medium, I connect in with our loved ones on the other side. And I'm also a certified life coach. And as a life coach, I help people take action to create the life they want to have, mostly to help people recognize they have the power to change their lives. Now, today's coaching tip is all about censoring ourselves. A few weeks ago, I was asked, actually a couple months ago, I was asked to speak to people at an assisted living facility. And it was a living facility where some people were assisted, some were, it's more of a retirement community, some were in the nursing home aspects. So I was asked to speak there and I thought, well, that'd be interesting. You know, after a few emails, we settled in on the topic of stress relief. And the person who hired me was very interested in everything I do, not just teaching stress relief and meditations, uh, everything I teach, but also the mediumship and the healing work, energy and all of that. So I asked if the audience would be open to looking at stress relief from a different angle rather than just the typical eat right, sleep well, all of that stuff that we're so used to when people talk about stress. And she thought that would be OK. And I said, OK, so. I planned out what I wanted to talk about. And then three days before I was supposed to speak, she contacted me to tell me that her bosses wanted to make sure I was very clear that I had to stay on the stress relief topic, that I wasn't to touch on mediumship or anything else that could be deemed offensive or that our conservative people here would not approve of. And it turned out this facility was run by a traditional Christian religion, which makes it very interesting when you think about it, that I was hired. Um, but she told me that I could cancel if I was offended or if I didn't want to do it. And she felt very badly about it and did not want to limit me in what I was going to say or anything like that. But she had these constraints from her boss. So I said, you know, I didn't feel right about canceling it. So I said, well, could I talk about vibrations? I had thought I might do stress relief through vibrational shifts. And she didn't think vibration would go over well. So I couldn't use the word vibration. So then I asked about energy and she thought energy could work. Um, of course, now I had everything planned. So I had to go back through my notes and change some words here and there. And I had to make sure I was focused on using the word energy in a more generic way. You know, so many of us will say, well, our energy feels off. But when I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about we can do healing work. We can change how you're feeling. We can shift, manifest, create intentions, all sorts of things. And I wanted to talk about some of the negative vibrations that would happen in our bodies um, if we were under stress. So I've talked about stress relief quite a lot. I've done many workshops on it and lectures, all sorts of things. And usually mediumship doesn't come into it. But it's always possible when I'm talking that I could very well casually mention uh, mediumship, vibration, healing, all sorts of things, because these are things I talk about all the time. And they're such a part of me that... I don't usually pay attention to what I'm saying when it comes to those things. So when the day came, I was very concerned about having to censor myself. I knew I was going to have to watch my words. And as I was talking to them, there were times where I didn't feel like myself at all. I didn't feel very connected to the audience um, as I usually am. It also wasn't my normal audience, so I was at a as a bit of a disadvantage right there because of that, but censoring myself did not help. I looked up the definition of censorship, and it's the suppression of speech, public communication, or other information on the basis that such material is considered objectionable, harmful, sensitive, or even inconvenient. And it was definitely what was happening for me as I was being asked to censor myself and censor the message that I wanted to present to these people. We know that when other people censor us, it limits our freedom. But when we censor ourselves, it's more than limiting our freedom. We're actually limiting who we really are. When we censor ourselves, we don't express ourselves authentically. We watch our words or actions because we're trying to appease someone else. We're presenting ourselves in such a way as to get approval. We limit our growth as a person. Um, we're limiting our opportunities and our expressions. It's kind of like we put ourselves in this box and that blocks us from creating the life we want to have. And this is never good. 
this experience strongly reminded me of the value that I place on speaking my truth and of being who I am. Because I was so concerned about offending people, I wasn't acting naturally or normally for me. Now, as I was speaking, two people came into the room and were intently observing me. They were obviously the administration. They were there to check up on me and to make sure I followed their rules. At that point, I was more concerned about connecting to the audience than I was that they were sitting there judging me. I didn't have time to worry about it because I had so many other things I was trying to achieve. And I wanted to focus on the communication without stepping over their boundaries. And so I couldn't sit there in my head and go, oh, these people are watching me and judging me. I hope I don't do something wrong. I just had to go with it. Now, this experience was the perfect learning opportunity. We always need a reminder about whatever is happening in our lives. Because I didn't want to cancel, I went to the lecture knowing full well I was going to have to suppress myself. I was going to have to have to censor what I was going to say. And I knew it could be a little bit tricky or else I wouldn't have been concerned about it. I didn't like it. The lecture went well enough. I thought it was okay. But I'll be sure not to put myself in that situation again. When we limit the expression of ourselves and we don't feel like ourselves, we'll feel unbalanced, uncentered, unnatural. And we can censor ourselves in many different ways, not just in a public demonstration of something where I'm speaking to people, but in our lives, we censor ourselves all the time. When we tell somebody that they look nice or their hair is lovely or you like their clothes or whatever, but you really don't like it, that's actually a form of censoring your words. And I'm not saying to lie if you don't like something, but instead say something else that is actually true to you. You like your hair really captures your personality or something like that. My daughter does this very well. I tend to buy some clothing that's um, on the colorful side and she, she will not like it normally. And she'll say to me, oh, I can see you wearing that or I can definitely uh, understand that that's something you would like. And it, she won't tell me she likes it if she doesn't like it. We also censor ourselves when we're denying our emotions, when we're not facing what we're really feeling. We're not acknowledging what's going on. When we spend time with people who are judgmental or critical we and we don't protect our energy by standing up for ourselves, speaking our truth, because we don't want to cause conflict or whatever reason, we're censoring ourselves. If you censor yourself, you'll find your connections to other people are not as authentic as they might be. They can't be authentic when you're not living in alignment with who you truly are, when you're not presenting yourself in an authentic manner, when you're not communicating your needs, your wants, your thoughts, your ideas, you're censoring yourself and it's a trap. You're limiting the expression of who you are and who you can become. So what you want to do is just pay attention. If you catch yourself not saying something, maybe there's a certain area where you don't speak your truth. Maybe you do white lies to cover up because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. You're censoring yourself. Pay attention to these things because censoring will never get you to your true self. It's only going to limit the expression of who you are. And that is my coaching tip of the day. You can reach me at psychicmediumcolleen.com. And if you sign up for my mailing list there, you can get a free uh, ebook called The Three Keys to Happiness. It has some action steps in there for you. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Self Empowerment Coach. So we are going to go to our first caller, who is Davina in England. Davina, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. And how can I help you today? Um, I would like some guidance in my romance life, please. Say that again? In your what? Um, in my romantic life. Okay. I'm having a hard time understanding you for some reason. Um, so did you say your romantic life? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, and now, this is interesting. Um, are you in a relationship right now? I'm not, no, but I'm in communication with somebody. Okay. It seems to me, the energy that I'm picking up around you right away is the energy of somebody who is tired of of looking for somebody. Has it been quite some time that you've been looking for the right person? 
Um, well, I have just been concentrating on my career, so I wasn't really interested in a relationship. But um, now that I have met someone, I'm thinking maybe I just wanted to know if this situation could go somewhere. This person's a liar. Yeah. Sure. Um, because when I'm picking up on that bit of tired energy, it's kind of the feeling of, um, I know you said you were working on your business stuff more, concentrated on that, but there's yeah. also the feeling of, I'm not really sure if it's going to work. And I'm not talking about the current relationship. I'm talking about any relationship. Okay. That there's exactly. that feeling of, I'm not really sure. Um, yeah. Is it worth my effort? And that kind of bleeds over into this new, newer relationship here. I have to tell you when I'm touching into that energy, this actually uh-huh. feels pretty good to me. This feels like a good uh-huh. opportunity. Um, it really does. The other person feels very nice, uh, very kind. There's, I'm a, getting a little bit of hesitation um, on being, how can I put it, a quick mover. I don't feel like this person's a quick mover. Like they're going to say, okay, this is great. Uh, let's jump into a really heavy duty relationship right away. So it seems yeah. to be, I'm going to call, I'm going to call this a more mature relationship <laughs> because it's the relationship yeah. where we're really figuring out who's who and what you're really like. So I get such a positive yeah. vibration on looking at each other from a very open-minded kind of let's just see what happens kind of perspective are you are you trying to do it that way i am yeah but the person is um, a bit five years younger than me okay that's okay mm-hmm. i don't have any he, i don't have any worries about that yeah yeah there's no worries with that that doesn't bother me at all um yeah it's the it's the feeling of Starting out, you know how we always say we want to start with a friend first. We want it to be our friend. It's more the feeling of that, that I want to go that route to and really do that route. And that's what it feels like to me. So it feels like there's no rush. You take your time. You figure out what what each other is really like. I don't feel pressure. And I must say, that's um, a nice change for me. (laughs) Because usually when I'm touching into a relationship, there's always some kind of pressure. And I'm not feeling that. So that's wonderful. So it seems to me if you take your time and just kind of go with the flow, see what happens, that there's yeah. definitely a potential here. Have you guys been talking for long? Um, for a few months. But, well, okay. since last year, actually. But he's currently filming. Um, so okay. He's, um, uh, it's, his, it's his job. He's an actor, so he's filming abroad at the moment. Okay. Good. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't mind that either. That doesn't bother me either. Um, and and uh-huh. have you guys gotten together physically? Like, have you talked to each other in person? No, we haven't. No, it's just been communication. Um, okay. And texting. Yeah. Okay, because I, I feel I feel the physical connection of of talking to each other in person. So that must be going to be coming to you. Um, okay. There's okay. Um, so stay open for that. You know, uh, we we obviously don't want to have just a total complete texting relationship, and that's really all we have. Um, so no, no, I feel like there's the board. right. Well, and once yeah. he comes back, or you can connect again yeah. that way. So. Um, yeah. I feel okay with that Um, down the line when I go down the line a little bit with this. I want to make sure um, that you guys have established uh, what you really feel, what makes sense to you, uh, how it fits without too many expectations, you know, because we always have these expectations that when we meet the person, they're going to act like this. They're going to do this. Um, Go into it more open so you don't have that. Um, and then as time goes on, I do feel there comes a point where you, you really have to kind of weigh what you want. Okay. So what you really want out of a relationship, I'm not saying there's anything bad going to happen, but it comes a point Mm -hmm. where you're just going to really want to be clear about what you want. And that makes sense to me. Okay. So yeah. I guess, you know, the feeling I'm getting, oh, to summarize this, is that this seems like a good opportunity 
take your time, don't rush, no pressure, uh, just get to know each other on that friend kind of route first. I do feel, um, you know, talking in person and those kinds of things. So this feels yeah. okay to me. I'm not getting any weird sensations where I go, ah, no, that's not it. That's not mm. it. Yeah. Um, I'm not getting that. So I do want to make sure I'm very clear about that. Um, obviously, yeah. you both have your own free will. You create whatever you want to create with that. <laughs> and, okay. and when, so is, when is he coming back? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, about another two months. Okay. So you still got some time. Um, yeah. And you, okay. And you had another question there? Oh, I, w I just wanted to know if you think that um, he feels attracted towards me. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like he is, he definitely is interested. Okay. Now, if he comes, you know, when he comes back, um, you'll want to uh, connect as, as quickly as you can, you know, in person. Mm -hmm. Just because yeah. that will give you more of a, um, I don't know what I want to call it. Just you'll, you'll understand more at that point, you know, but I'm yeah. feeling the communication you're having is good. So keep going with that. Um, if you have questions as time goes on, like if you start questioning things and you're wondering, yeah. you know, am I important enough or this or that, then just kind of step back for a second and just kind of go back inside yourself and figure out what it is you really need, what it is you really want. Um, that okay. will help you. Okay. 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 Well, Davina, it was so nice talking to you. Good luck with that. It's always kind of fun when we have a new opportunity coming in, isn't it? Thank you so much. I appreciate you're welcome. that. You're welcome. You have a great day. And that was Stefina from England and the United Kingdom. And it's always so interesting, you know, when we start a new relationship and we wonder, um, you know, what's going to happen. And it felt so good with her because I didn't feel like she was um, jumping the gun too far on that. You know how we get our hopes up and then we think, oh, it's going to be great and everything's going to be wonderful. And... Uh, and we start thinking a little too much, but I felt good about her. So this will be fun to see what happens. So uh, we will be moving on to Jennifer from Oregon. And Jennifer, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. And how can I help you today? Um, I guess I just wanted to see if I had any messages for me and where I'm, I need a, point in the direction of my life. <laughs> yeah, that's a big one, isn't it? <laughs> direction of life. That's always a good one. <laughs> now, um, what I want to do is I'm going to check in with uh, someone on the other side for you uh, first, because I am feeling a male coming in right now that wants to talk to you. And I, actually, I've got two, so this will be fun to see if this makes sense to you. Um, because I have a male who's on the younger side coming in, and then I have a male who's on the older side coming in. So the older one I'm going to go with, and we'll see if the young one sticks around. Um, but the older one that's coming in, he I have to say he's got the grandfatherly, fatherly kind of vibe going. Um, and this is a person, huh, this is interesting. Do you have a grandfather who has passed? I should check with you first. Yeah. Okay, and would, you, and would you have to know if he had a leg issue, something that would have affected his walking? Um, I mean, I know it was hard for him to move around. I don't know exactly what he had because I was young when he died. Okay, because this guy's got a leg issue um, because I feel um, a stiffness. I mean, I have... like, unless he's like yeah. related to my husband's side. Oh, it could be too. It really could be. Yeah, it could be on both sides. So there is the feeling of having uh, some issues walking. I want to um, lean on something. So he may have a cane, that kind of thing. Um, the way he comes through is kind of interesting to me because I can get a really good sense of uh, common sense. You know, he knows what's going on, uh, the very traditional hard work. But I like the intelligence. There's an intelligence here. Uh, this person knows a lot about a lot. And the way he's coming through, um, 
he tells me that you actually are very similar to him in that way, that you know a lot about a lot. You're very smart. You're very intelligent yourself. He says you do tend to get caught in the planning of things. Do you try to plan things out so much all the time, thinking if you do this, then this is going to happen? Are you one of those kind of people? Yeah. <laughs> And okay, okay, and you, you and so when things don't always work out the way you thought they might, um, it can really get you worried and all of that. And I'm getting a little bit of stomach issues, and I don't know if it goes with this man on the other side or if it goes with you. When you get really stressed out, does your stomach bother you? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think because I'm getting a lot of stomach stuff right now, and it just feels, uh, you know, <laughs> and, you know, you're, oh dear, are you a little bit of a control freak? Yeah, more like a perfectionist, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm yeah, trying to work on it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think sometimes when we have uh, those tendencies, uh, it takes a while to release control and to let go of, you know, wanting everything to be just perfect. It takes a little bit. But if, if you're aware of it, you've been working on it a little bit, then you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so um, there's a little bit of that. And part of that is you really don't like when things um, become uncertain or don't go the way you had planned. And that can really throw you off. Now, I'm wondering, because I'm feeling all of a sudden a shift in career, um, have you decided to change careers, or are you on a different path than you thought you would be on? What's going on in the career? Um, well, I've been a stay-at-home mom, and recently I filled out things to be a home care worker. <laughs> Okay, okay. So you're moving into something different, but in a way, not. <laughs> because yeah. of the caretaking. Yeah, pretty much when they ask you me go. questions, like, uh, yeah, I do that with my kids, but I guess I do it with older people. <laughs> yeah. And the thing, now here is something that is really interesting for you. Because you're, um, thank goodness, one of those people, you've got um, several very good qualities. One, you're very good at taking care of people, obviously. And two, you actually have an intuitive sense where you can pick up what other people are feeling. Uh, you have a high degree of empathy, don't you? Yeah, I just don't know when I should, I always second guess myself. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, you know, just because you feel something that somebody else is, is experiencing, or if you think something's going on with somebody, you don't have to come right out and say, oh, are you experiencing this? You can just kind of change your behaviors based on what you're feeling for them. So you don't have to let them know. So if you change your behavior a little bit, you know, I mean, if say you pick up that somebody's having a bad day, but they're telling you they're fine and you, you all of a sudden you just start asking them some questions to kind of see, oh, how are you? How are you doing? Great. OK, so what's going on here? And you're just kind of giving them some reassurance um, that will help. And that will also be validating what you're feeling. Um, <clears throat> so when you're touching in with somebody, you know, and you feel their energy and you just all of a sudden you're feeling their, the empathy for them or you think they're feeling a certain way, um, you don't have to be obnoxious about it. So that will help you not second guess yourself on that. And the thing, too, okay, is... Yeah, lately I've been feeling like I need to talk to my friend. I just felt like... There's something going on with her, and I haven't touched bases on it yet. <laughs> okay, there you go. Perfect example. Perfect. Because all you have to do is just give her a call and say, Hi, I was thinking about you. I'm wondering how things are going. You don't have to say anything else. I mean, if you feel like something's wrong, you, you don't have to say that right away. You can wait and see what happens. So that's a perfect example. Okay. You get that little feeling of following it. Same thing when you filled out those papers. All of a sudden, you just had that feeling. You should follow it, didn't you? Yeah, well, I've been job. thinking about it a long time, and then my dad came to me, and my grandma needs to, needs to be taken care of, but that's a whole big issue, but I decided regardless, I just, I wanted to do it, because I like helping people. Yes, yeah. perfect, perfect. And so what is, what's going to happen now? Just because we've talked about this, I can tell you this is what's going to happen. You're going to start having these thoughts just kind of go through your head really fast. Um, and for another simple example is, you know, uh, should I take an umbrella with me or not? You know, or my raincoat with me. Um, if that goes through your head, take it with you. Just take it. 
So you'll start to notice those little thoughts that come through because they're going to be fast. They're not going to hit you over the head. I always do but, that. I'm like, oh, I thought about that. And if I just listened, I would. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. See, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That is it. Exactly. So you want to start following those because that's going to come in really handy when you're working with people because you're going to look at somebody, they're going to say they're fine and they're really not. And, or you're going to, you know, maybe you'll have to give them a medication, but it feels wrong to you. And you think, you know what, I better double check that first, you know, so you're going to be moving into that. So this is really, really what you're, you don't even need to direction. You don't need life direction. What you need is to make sure you're listening to yourself. That's what you need. Listening to yourself is going to take care of your life direction. You're going to be perfect. And especially because you're already aware of it. And, and when you don't hear it, you're, you know, you hear it and you dismiss it, you ignore it. Just go, okay, yep, I should have done that. Oh, well, too bad. Next time. So don't beat yourself up over it. Just kind of go with the flow of it. It'll be great. And you'll really get it. It'll be awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's so fun. I love that, Jennifer. I'm just so excited that um, (laughs) you're touching in with yourself and you're figuring out what you want and listening to yourself because that's the goal in life, really. You listen to yourself, what you want, what you need, where you go. Listen to that intuition. That's going to create the life you want to have. That is so awesome. I'm so excited. So you keep following that because I do feel that opportunity coming with the caretaking and everything that's coming. So no worries there. You're going to have fun at it and you're going to be good at it. You're going to be very good at it. So that's going to be excellent. Well, Jennifer, I'm getting my 60 second warning. So it looks like I'm going to be have to wrap up here. Um, So it was so nice talking to you. You have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. And that was Jennifer from Oregon. And I want to thank everybody for watching and listening. I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, and you can connect with me at psychicmediumcolleena.com. And I would love to hear from you there. And also on Facebook, Colleen Vanderzyden, medium and self-empowerment coach. You guys have a great week, and I will talk to you next week. Goodbye. Bye.